Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Ultimate Iron Man. And last video, we did Vorcap, and it took us until 50kc to get the guaranteed head, so we now have the assembler on the UIM. And at 42kc, we got very lucky and got the Dragon Plate Skirt drop, which is a 1 out of 75, and by getting that, we were finally able to store the Dragon Chain Body, which we've been holding onto since July 2019. So we got a brand new spot freed up in the looting bag. But the assembler is untradeable, meaning that we cannot put it in the looting bag, and I think we'll just keep on training range until we get 99 range, and then probably after that drop the assembler, but we're going to keep this on us for a long time. We'll just be uh, sitting here in the inventory at the bottom here for a very, very long time, or even better, on our back. But now that we have the assembler, I think now is a good time to go for the mounted Xerox Talisman for the POH. So let's head over to the wiki, and I'll show you what's what. So the mounted Xerox Talisman is pretty self-explanatory. You can mount a Xerox Talisman in the POH, and you get unlimited charges on it. Only thing being that we have to get 5,000 Lizardman things, as well as an extra Talisman too. And uh, that could take quite some time. And to get the Lizardman things, I'm going to be killing Lizardman Shaman. So let's head over to the wiki page, and I will show you what's over here. So you can see the drop rate right here for the Lizardman things, and it looks like we'll get maybe just under one Fang per kill on average, just from the regular Fang drops. But then, the Xerox Talisman is 1 out of 125 if you have the easy Karen Diary done, which we do, and you can dismantle these into 100 things each. So after doing some quick maths in my head, I think that would be about 3 to 3.5k kills on average to uh, get the 5,000 things that we'll need for the mounted Xerox, I think. Maybe closer to 3.5k. And then, probably the most important thing about doing Shamans is it has a very, very special, important drop, which I'm sure most of you know about. The Dragon Warhammer is a 1 out of 5,000 chance per kill. And this item is something that I'd really, really, really like to have on the account. It lowers the defense of the monsters. I don't want to get too much into it now, but I'd want to use that for like God Wars, Calfly Queen, Raids, maybe eventually Corp, maybe eventually Vorkath if we don't have a BGS by then. Um, maybe even like Sire, although I probably wouldn't do Sire. Maybe I'd do a few kills just for the easy ranks, but... Um, maybe Seracnus. Point being, there's a lot of places the Dragon Warhammer would be really good at. We're still set up for Vorkat though, so first things first, let's clean up everything. Uh, we have the Salve EI, and when you unimbue things, uh, you get 80% of the points back. So if we uncharge, we'll get 640k Nightmare Zone points back. Uh, and we are done with this for a while, so let's drop that. We got about 5k Chaos runes from Vorkath, so we're going to sell these off to the shop. That was a nice easy 240k made right there. Oh yeah, I'm still trying to collect Cactus Binds as much as I can, because from Zora, we got about 1.6k Coconuts, and we need to match that with the Cactus Binds. So I guess like maybe in between runs, I'll be collecting Cactus Binds, and that pile will slowly add up. Hopefully soon we can use up those supplies and free up two more bag slots. But let's suicide to Hispori, and I'll see you back once we're gearing up and everything. I'm really glad we got all these antidote plus pluses from Zora. Each dose lasts for 12 minutes, so one full potion is 48 minutes, so I'll probably use one potion per trip. I think that should probably be good, but I'm going to decant them into one dose each, so that way we won't have to waste potions at the end of each trip because I do not want to start a trip with a one, two, or three dose potion. Something I completely overlooked was the fact that we'll have to wear the full Shazine armor, which means our full range setup will be in the looting bag, uh, which is going to be kind of difficult because we don't have that much space available. Um, I am going to alk the Barrow's gloves though because we'll have the Shazing gloves on, so those are going goodbye, and we can always buy those back very easily. In order to put the Serp Helm in, it has to be uncharged, so I'll take all the scales out of there. Well, you get the scales back, right? 327k. Okay, cool. And then we can just grab our Shazing armor here out of the armor case. Yeah, dude, we are absolutely packed to the brim right now. We have six spots open in the looting bag, and these six items are going in there. <laughs> oh, jeez. Makes me a little bit anxious, but I'm looking at the drop table of Lizardmen. Actually, I'll just show you. So we got Alkables here that we're going to Alk, of course. We got Runes, which we don't really need to keep. Uh, same with these. I'll probably just Alk the Runeite Ore and then not pick up the rest of this. Uh, the Herbs, other oh, noted too. I guess the only ones I'll be taking is Cadentine and Dwarf Weed because we have stacks for those already. And then a bunch of seeds. I think the only ones I'll be planting will be Snapdragon and Torstol, and I guess the Hardwood Trees. And then maybe plant some of these higher tier trees as we get them perhaps. So yeah, that's uh, the majority of the drop table then. Before we head over to Shamans, I want to make our cash stack 1 mil because Shamans drop a lot of Alkables and I have a feeling it's going to add up quite a bit. So just as like a way to keep track of the money, I'm going to put 574k here into 
to the Nightmare Zone coffer. And then we'll just keep track of the money this way and see like how much we make slash lose. Uh, let's go buy some runes now as well because we're almost out of nature runes. Huh. Well, I just hopped about 30 worlds at least. And there's not a single world with over 100 nature runes in there. In fact, most of them have below 50. So I guess we'll hold off on the nature runes for a bit. But I do want to buy water runes because we will be casting bones to peaches. And for that, we need earth runes, nature runes, and water runes. And luckily, we have one free spot in the rune pouch. I think a thousand should be good to start with. So whenever I want to cast bones to peaches, I'll just equip the dust staff because it's an item I always keep on me anyways for the house teleport. So we don't need to worry about getting me runes. I mean, mud runes. So here's where we're going for the shamans right over here. I'm looking at all the ways to get there. We could go to the farming guild. Uh, we could maybe make a battlefront teleport in the POH and run there. Or we could use Fairy and Code DJR and use the boat to take over here. It all seems like it would take about the same time, so I'll just do the Farming Guild teleport. It seems the most convenient. And going to the Farming Guild so often will remind me to do my Cactus Runs. Okay, so every time I show myself doing Shamans on any account, I always mention Rice Cup's video because when this spot first came out, Rice Cup made a really well-made in-depth video about the pros and cons of this spot versus other spots. So I will link that video in the description, and that will explain why I choose to use this spot over other spots. And it also explains the technique of how you need to stay on the south wall and the west wall and all that good stuff. So yeah, check it out in the description if you're curious. I'm sure I'll adjust my inventory setup as we go, but this is what we're starting with. And then for the quick prayers, I only set prey range. Maybe I'll turn on eagle eye. I'll just see over time how we do with the prayer. And then before we start, let's also check the KC. It should be one. Can we talk to this guy to check the KC? No, okay. Uh... Okay, I just feel like I should really get this on record. So uh, we've killed three Lizardmen in total. Uh, well, one Lizardman Shaman and then two regular Lizardmen. So one Shaman KC, 4,999 to go until I can complain about how unlucky I am on this account. Here's what's in the blowpipe to start out with. Uh, I think we might run out of darts, so we might have to make some more at some point, but luckily, at least with the assembler, we don't have to worry about picking up any darts from the ground. I also reset the XP tracker for all the relevant skills, so we'll see how much XP we gain by the end. I expect this will probably take about 50 hours maybe, that could be way off, but that's what I'm guessing. Now we're getting pretty close to a range level 2, but anyways, let's begin. Perhaps one of the most notorious grinds for any Iron Man account. Let's do it. It's so nice. I can attack the shamans from all the way across the room. I don't get dragged out on uh, on rapid. Um, I really think I should use eagle eye, but at the same time, I feel like the time like spent running to and from a uh, bank booth to unnote my prayer pots. I don't know if it's worth the time or not. Mm, I just like chilling here. This is like so, so chill, man. I've never done a shaman grind on any account before. So this is like all pretty new to me. I've done maybe like three or 400 shaman kills across accounts with the majority of those being before the spot even existed. And no, I'm not gonna be one tick flicking my prayer for 50 hours straight here. <laughs> Whenever I run out to grab the items that are like in the middle of the room, Every once in a while they'll jump, but something I could do if I really want to is equip the dust staff and then telegrab it, but um, that's more of like a hardcore Iron Man thing to do, just in case you DC or something, but it doesn't really matter for me. Ah uh, yes, my favorite drop, the Dragon Warhammer with the ornament kit. Okay, that's the first trip of Shaman's done. Let's take a look at uh, some things here. I did use Eagle Eye most of the time. It probably is worth it, but at the same time, like it drains the prayer so much faster. But I guess we go through less darts overall that way. So there's quite a few trade-offs. We'll just see how things go. Maybe I'll just switch back and forth based on what I feel like doing at the time. But this trip was like 40 to 45 kills or so. And yeah, we should be expecting to make quite a bit of GP as well from this. I guess after each trip, I'll sell off the runes I get and then do a cactus run, put that in the looting bag, and then we'll be good to come back here. Oh, another thing, I didn't need stamina at all. So I guess that'll free up a slot not having the stamina potion. Unfortunately, I can't save two spots because I can't put this stack of staminas in the looting bag since it is full, but at least we don't have to use staminas here. There's also like half an hour or so between having to take care of all this stuff after each trip and then the run over there. Maybe it'll be like 80 kills per hour, I'm gonna guess. Hey, it's the first Xerix Talisman on the account. Well, let's pick that up real quick. Okay, so all we have to do is right click, dismantle, yes, and then the thing stack will go up by 100. Beautiful. With the NPC indicator plugin on Runelite, you can add any monster onto that list, and then when you see them in game, they'll be highlighted, which is really nice for the spawns here. It makes them quite a bit easier to see. By the way, as of recording this, Runelight is fully compliant within Jagex's rules. Okay, another trip done, and I think I actually will camp Eagle Eye the whole time. 
Um, and it seems like I think if I bring seven prayer pots, that should be perfect for the amount of ranging potion that we have. Still haven't run out of food though. I haven't had to use bones to peaches at all. I barely take any damage here, and any damage that I do take, I have the blowpipe spec, plus the shamans also drop chili potatoes every once in a while. Um, but when I stream, I'll probably bring less prayer and more food just because I get distracted, but off stream we go ham. Hey, first range level coming in here at the shamans. There is level 88. Okay, I will not record every single long and curve bone that we get because I'm sure we will get plenty of them. But you know what? It's good construction XP. Oh, apparently I missed it, but we hit 180 million total XP. You know, I like to do those uh, 10 mil XP milestone check-in things. There's actually a Kebos task. Uh, I think it's a hard diary task. Teleport to Xerix Heart using Xerix Talisman. And yes, that is two long bones in my inventory. So let's go do that task right now so we don't forget to do it later. So we can rub it. That sounds weird. Go. To, what was it? Was it hard? I forgot already. I think that was it. Yeah, cool. We got the task done. And then I think we could take the things right back out, right? Hopefully. Yeah, okay, cool. And then we could dismantle that. And there's a hundred more things. We've gotten very lucky with these Xerox Talisman drops so far. Wait, is that right? It's 1 in 125 and we've gotten five of them in less than 200? Yo, that's crazy though. In less than 250 kills, our GP stack has grown by almost a mil. That's really good. Yeah, dude, I swear the moment we get enough money for 99 construction, I'm gonna drop whatever I'm doing and we'll go for 99 construction because that cape would be so, so good to have. Oh my God. What? <laughs> what? Oh. What? <laughs> oh my god. I can't believe that just happened. <laughs> oh my god. Dude. <laughs> what? I I'm, I'm shaking right now. What the hell? That wasn't supposed to happen so early. <laughs> it makes me not want to keep on going for the things because what if I get a second one? <laughs> What? Okay, let's go check the exact KC. Oh, that was not supposed to happen. <laughs> not this soon. Okay, so our Shaman KC is 277. Uh, I don't know what to do and I don't know what to say. I was expecting to at least have to grind this out for like a week or two straight of like all day, every day. Um, even at least first to get the mounted Xerix and then probably keep on going beyond that to get the Warhammer. But, um, I mean, <laughs> we got it. So, uh, we are going to keep on going on for the, uh, mounted Xerix. I mean, we're already getting a decent chunk into that. So we don't want to have it eventually. So may as well do it now while we're all prepared for it and ready to go. I swear though, if I get another Warhammer, uh, I mean, it'll be like hella money from the main. So. Oh, dude. <laughs> Yo, so I just found this picture of me. And for those of you that haven't seen my face before, here's a uh, a face reveal. That's literally what I look like all the time with my UIM. <laughs> all right, well, it's a new day right now. The Warhammer happened really late at night, so it all kind of feels like a blur still. Um, but I do still want to get the 5,000 fangs for the Mounted Xerix Talisman. But I don't want to do shamans mainly because I don't want to use up darts for the blowpipe. Obviously we have plenty of scales and scales are really easy to get, but darts could be a bit of an issue coming up. You can also get the fangs from raids. You can get like a few hundred to a few thousand depending on how many points you get. But I don't think it'd be worth the time because first off the odds of hitting that one specific roll, um, it is a common drop, but there's so many different rolls. And you know, if you do like what, maybe two raids per hour, the odds of getting that exact drop like four times or something or even more just probably isn't worth the time. But the alternative method that I want to do or at least try out is the stone chests. So let's head over to the wiki and I'll show you what it's about. Stone chests are a thieving training method which actually happens to be right next to where the shamans are that we were killing. The room is right over here in the lizardmen temple. A higher thieving level means a higher success rate as well as having a lock pick and according to Mod Ash at level 99 there's a 60.4% chance if you don't have a lock pick or a 70.2% chance if you do have one to successfully thieve the chest. Every once in a while you get teleported out as well. So that definitely cuts into the XP or in our case, the amount of loots that we'll get. But let's take a look at the loot now. There's a 4% chance to roll bolt tips, which would be either drop or elk depending on the type. Uh, there's seeds, which I'd mostly probably just drop. Maybe a couple of the higher tier seeds I'd keep. Uh, and then going down, this is the juicy drop table. This is what we're going there for. 
Medium clues are 1 out of 100, and then the Xerox Talisman is 1 out of 300. And the Easy Karen Diary does not cut this in half like it does for a lot of other methods of getting the Talisman. And then there's also a common drop of just getting a Lizardman thing just by itself. From what I've seen, apparently grinding out Eclectics is about 5 times more medium clues per hour, but we have to get the Xerox Talismans anyways for the 5,000 Fang, so maybe this could be a good method for our stage and our account to macro efficiently go for both Ranger Boots as well as the Mounted Xerox. So let's head over there now and test it out. In case you didn't know, we do actually already have 99 Thieving, and we actually have quite a bit of post-99 XP as well from uh, Thieving Master Farmers a while back trying to get seeds. But this is where the spot's at. We're going to run into one of these dungeons here. And I brought an Antidote++ plus plus because I believe they poison. So just in case I have that. And then we're going to run around the corner over to this spot right over here. And this method is really chill. I actually did this for the first time on Twisted League. And no, go away. Um... And all you do is just spam click on the stone chest here. I brought the thread needle to make a set of Zerishian because we can store that in the POH. But once we get the one set, I'm not going to keep on doing that. I'm just going to drop this because it's really not worth the crafting XP. Charge ships would be so, so, so much more XP than just standing here wasting time crafting these fabrics. Okay, well, we got a medium clue already in literally like 30 seconds of being here. So we're going to do that. And I think we'll just build up all the medium caskets we get while we're here. And then next video, we could do a full length opening of all the medium clues. Okay, well, there's the uh, full Zerishian outfit. And for some reason, you don't store it in the magic wardrobe, which is, you know, where you think magic armor would go. It gets stored in the armor case, which I, I guess it's armor, but yeah. All the other magic sets go in here. It's really weird, I don't know. Yeah, so as I said, you get teleported out once in a while, and it's right to this spot over here. And then it's a very short run to get back to this spot. Okay, it seems like when you're thieving the chest here, your run doesn't restore, so maybe it'd be good to bring stamina. It's really weird, you know, usually if you stand still, your run restores, but... I guess you're like doing an action. Okay, so it's been pretty much one hour now. Let's take a look at the XP rate. So we'll uh, pause the XP here and we gained 111k XP in this hour, but let's round that down to 100k because it's a nice easier number to work with. And I was going pretty hard this hour. In fact, I'm sure that over time it will go well below 100k thieving XP per hour due to like doing cactus runs and other farm runs and clues and other stuff too. But we'll just say 100k XP per hour because that's a nice even number to work with. 100k per hour would mean 357 thieves of the chest per hour and the clues are one out of 100, so that'd be about three and a half clues clues per hour, and because the talisman is 1 out of 300, uh, we'd get about 1 talisman per hour. And then throughout the hour, we started with 944 fangs, and we ended with 1,050, so I guess it'll be about 100 fangs per hour, plus the 1 talisman per hour, which means that we could probably expect 200 fangs per hour. And because we're at about 1,000, that means we have 20 more hours of thieving these chests to go, assuming we meet the drop rate for the talismans. We did not get a talisman this first hour, but we pretty much met the rate for the medium clues. We got 4 medium clues this hour so we've got a long time ahead of us to go for thieving these chests you know 200 fangs per hour we need 4k fangs um maybe i'll just check in every five hours hopefully every five hours uh for every 1k uh thing milestone so yeah i'll just be spending my life clicking away here at the stone chests two xerox talismans so far i think i'm probably about one below the drop rate right now so we're due for one soon tm <laughs> oh, that's so funny. That's so funny. Okay, we got a hard casket from an impling. Okay. Oh, there's a hundred hard clues too. Doesn't mean anything, but it's cool. I just went to check the stash units because I thought I have all the medium stashes built, but apparently there's one I don't have built, and uh, we're building that now. So once I build this, we'll have every single medium stash unit done. We have all the easy ones done and all the beginner ones done. No one saw the wrong planks in the inventory. Okay, there's uh, 2,000 Lizardman things now. Hey, it's my birth year, let's go. There it is, the nerd log coming in strong. It's been a pretty long day of thieving today. Uh, we're almost halfway to the amount of things that we need, but if you wanna see the XP, very quickly, uh, this is what we gained today, about 650k thieving XP. But what I want to do now while I eat and edit videos is actually AFK at the regular Lizardmen. I don't want to waste darts on the blowpipe, so what I could do instead, because my whip and my hosta are both in the looting bag, what I could do is come over here to Drainer, and there's a stash unit right over here, a master stash, that has a whip in there that I built a long time ago with the spine chops and the Legends Cape. 
These will stay in my inventory and then we can use the whip to kill the lizard men. I'll put my graceful back into the wardrobe and then grab out proselyte so I can just pray the whole time because you can store proselyte in the armor case. I really don't care enough to grab the uh, dragon defender out from the stash unit but there is a very basic budget setup that's very fast to get. Honestly maybe I should use Artie Cloak just because it'll be like really AFK. I'm just gonna be AFK so I don't even like care that much about max DPS but and yeah, make some prayer pods and we'll be good to go. So the Lizardmen are aggressive. I can just AFK. Actually, I think I'll get a God book next time I uh, finish this trip here, but I'll just be AFK here the whole time. The uh, Xerix Talisman is one out of 125 from them. And they do drop one Fang at a time as well. Yeah, like just like that. Probably slightly less Fangs per hour than would be doing the chest, but this is AFK and it's better than just not playing the account at all while I have to edit and eat. Something is better than nothing. Maybe whenever I run out of prayer, I can just teleport back to the house and restore everything. So I'll probably do that just to save potions as well as reset the aggro. Okay, you can see it's been almost one hour of killing the Lizardmen here. And in the hour, we killed 171 Lizardmen. So that's the equivalent of about almost one and a half Xerox Talismans per hour, as well as 40 of these fangs per hour. So in total, it's like just under 200 fangs per hour, whereas the stone chests are also about 200 fangs per hour. And I'm gonna guess that killing shamans as well is probably about 200, maybe a little bit more fangs per hour. But point being that all these methods for getting fangs all end up being about 200 fangs per hour. And I just said fangs way too many times. Now, when I mentioned raids before, yeah, you can get a drop from raids. It's like one or 2K fangs at a time. But the amount of time it would take to get one drop on average would most likely come out to less than 200 fangs per hour. So overall, going for raids, I don't think is worth it, especially when there's still some more gear I want to get for raids. Most notably, the Lance. 90 Herbore would be good, but I don't want to get too much into a raids discussion right now. I'm just happy to be getting these mediums from the stone chests. And there is 3,000 fangs now. Oh, there's uh, 4k fangs now. The final stretch begins. Yo, okay, once you put the cactus spines in the bag and we check the bag, our cactus spines are now equal or above our coconuts, so we are set. No more cactus runs. Okay, it looks like we have a virtual thieving level. There's uh, 101. It doesn't say the level here, but that is 101 thieving. Oh, there it is. The last Xerix talisman that we need. Let's dismantle it, and we now have over 5,000 things that we need to build the uh, mounted Xerix talisman, so... Let's go and build it now. After getting the Warhammer, I ended up spending about 20 to 25 hours at the stone chests to get these 5,000 things in total and the extra amulet. So let's build the uh, mounted Xerox Talisman. Oh, it's beautiful. The Mount Key to Mordom Teleport is unlocked after you get the Ancient Tablet from Raids. And once we get that, you can use it on the mounted one. So we don't have to worry about getting an extra talisman for that. Now, what's so special about having this mounted talisman in the POH? Well, I'm gonna set the uh, default left click to the Xerox Glade. And by teleporting to the Glade, there's a couple benefits from doing this. Uh, first thing is that's right next to magic trees. So once we start doing birdhouse runs again, we could do magic trees instead of the yew trees that I was doing before, uh, which were in Karend. There is a downside that does take longer, and you could argue that the slightly more Hunter XP isn't worth the time chopping magics. And I probably will end up doing use, but at least the opportunity is available to cut those magic trees for the birdhouse runs. And the second thing is that that's an even closer teleport than the POH teleport uh, to this farming patch right here. So I can move my POH to a more useful place and I don't have to have it here anymore. I think I'm gonna move my house over to Taverly because there's really no close teleport if I have to go to Taverly for a clue step. So Taverly is now home. Um, but besides just the Glade teleport on here, um, all these teleports on here have their own like niches and uses for very specific things like they're close to certain clue steps or maybe close to the woodcutting guild or just very specific things like that. So it's nice to have unlimited teleports from the Xerox Talisman and you'll never have to get a Xerox Talisman ever again on this account, hopefully. We managed to get 54 clues while doing this, which we'll spend the next video opening and suiciding and taking care of all that. And along the way, we got that last medium stash unit built, so all the medium stashes are taken care of. Oh yeah, I never casted Bones to Peaches a single time. Uh, oh, I used to foul door teleport once, but I'm gonna drop those water runes. We never <laughs> even end up using them. We also ended up profiting about 1 mil GP from uh, all the Lizardman Shaman that we killed. Oh yeah, if you're just trying to do clues though, definitely do Eclectics. They're like four to five times more clues per hour. This was just like a more macro efficient way for me and my goals and what I was working towards and what I enjoy doing. Something else I wanna take a look at here is the thieving XP that we gained from uh, thieving all these stone chests for like 20 plus hours. So as I'm sure you know by now, I like going for ranks on the UIM and that kind of is one of my goals of the series. Um, I mean, it's not really a goal, but it's just something I like to work on is going for ranks. 
and uh, we gained 1.4 mil thieving XP. Let's take a look at the high scores now. I checked the rank before. Our rank was 342 for thieving. And after logging out, our thieving rank is now 262. So we gained like 80 ranks while doing this, which, you know, like when you have this much XP um, and you're that high on the leaderboards, that is quite a few ranks. Um, thieving is actually one of the harder skills to compete for, for UIM. Probably thieving and fire making are really difficult because so many people train at post 99. Guess we could uh, drop these extra things as well. But you know, at the start of the video, we set out to get the Mounted Xerox Talisman, and the goal has been completed. And along the way, we got a nice shiny red boy here, and we'll be helping us out with quite a few PVM related things in the future. And you know what? The most important thing though, is that we unlocked a new form of transportation. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope that you have a wonderful day, and I will see you again next time.